Uh, welcome to this first course on Power Systems, Module 2. And in this module, we'll look at uh, electric energy and the environment. And uh, once again, the, the reference textbook is listed here. So here we will look at uh, various, uh, various options we have uh, to produce uh, electricity and what the consequences are. And uh, so th these things uh, we ought to be aware of. Uh, so that's really the purpose of uh, this uh, module here. So if you look at the big picture, this slide comes from DOE. It shows that uh, we consume roughly in the United States, and this is uh, 2004, but uh, things have not changed all that much, uh, that we consume about 100 quadrillion BTUs. And what's a quadrillion? It's, ten, it's a large quantity, 10 to the 15 BTUs. And those of you who are more familiar with uh, kilowatt hours, roughly 10,000 BTUs uh, equal uh, uh, 2.93 kilowatt hours. So we consume about 100, and uh, we produce only 70. So 30 percent, 100 is a good number, because then we can talk in percentages that 30% uh, is uh, imported in various forms. So that is a uh, you know, real financial drain. It's, uh, it's a per year expense, not a one shot. So I think uh, there is a way to, there must be a way to plug this uh, hole, so to speak, uh, for energy self-sufficiency. So if you look at how we consume this energy, uh, you see that we convert roughly 40% into electricity before we consume it. And at the moment, uh, very little is used for transportation. It's really the difference of these two bars that you see that we use in form of electricity for uh, uh, transportation. So again, if we combine, uh, as we have more plug-in vehicles and things like that, then uh, the percentage of energy that we can uh, use as electricity may grow up to be as high as, let's say, 60 percent. So we are looking at a very large uh, sector of uh, uh, energy consumption. Now, how do we generate this uh, electricity, at least in the U.S.? And that's what is shown here, that uh, coal is king, as you can see, about uh, 52 percent. And then we have uh, nuclear, about uh, 22 percent or something like that. And uh, hydro is there, about 8 percent, and uh, other sources. But you can see that uh, uh, these uh, other sources are very little, uh, which include uh, renewable uh, renewables. That's about 3 percent. So that's the number which uh, ought to change. So what are the choices we have uh, in generating electricity? We have hydropower plants. We have fossil fuels-based uh, power plants like coal, uh, oil, and natural gas. Then we have nuclear, and then finally uh, we have uh, renewables. So the consequence of uh, uh, generating electricity, at least using fossil fuels, is the greenhouse gases, and then also mercury and uh, thermal pollution. Because uh, as you'll see, uh, there's a finite efficiency of uh, our efficiencies of these uh, uh, thermal power plants, and therefore whatever is not uh, uh, converted into electricity goes as uh, thermal pollution. Okay. So then uh, let's uh, look at uh, various types. One is uh, hydropower, uh, you know, building dams and then using uh, that uh, potential energy, as you can see here, being converted into uh, this uh, electricity here. And uh, so we have high head hydro, medium head hydro, and runoff river where we can use the, uh, the flow in the river itself or a very small head uh, to generate electricity. But uh, a lot of these options are already used up. And uh, it's not uh, very easy to make uh, hydroelectric dams. Uh, they have many other consequences here. So the option of using hydro, at least in the United States, is... Uh, quite limited. So like I mentioned earlier, that uh, fossil fuel-based power plants, they are the, the main source of electricity generation. And that's uh, mostly in the form of coal, 
but also natural gas and oil here. So we look at uh, all of these here. <clears throat> so when it comes to coal, uh, quite often it is used in this so-called Rankine thermodynamic cycle, where we burn coal and uh, then we heat this water in this boiler here. Uh, it, uh, you know, it gets converted into steam at high pressure, uh, which runs this turbine. And this exhaust from this turbine is then condensed and uh, it then convert, gets converted into water, which is then pumped and sent back to the boiler here. So that's where this cycle is completed. And uh, as you can see here that uh, this uh, steam coming out uh, at, at the end of this uh, turbine uh, then needs to be condensed. So we need a you know, large amount of water to really cool it. So a lot of these coal plants are built very close to rivers and lakes and so forth for cooling uh, for, you know, in this condenser. So uh, we can see here that uh, if the typical efficiency is only 35 to 40 percent, then the rest uh, goes as uh, uh, thermal pollution, if you will. So the efficiency of these uh, thermodynamic cycles is limited by uh, so-called Carnot efficiency. And uh, Carnot was a French scientist, uh, and many, many years ago, uh, he determined what the maximum efficiency, thermodynamic efficiency, can be. And that's the highest temperature in the cycle minus the lowest temperature divided by the highest temperature. So this uh, sort of sets the upper limit on high, how, how high the efficiency can be. So that's a good number to know uh, to shoot for it. OK? <clears throat> so. Uh, so we talked about this Rankine cycle. Then there's so-called Brayton cycle, which is used in gas turbines. Um, many utilities use gas turbines for uh, meeting the peak load demands, where you need to uh, you know, run these gas, uh, gas turbines only for a short time when the peak load occurs. So here what happens is that the air is taken in through, and this compressor compresses it to a high temperature a high pressure, I should say, and then we adding the fuel in in this combustion chamber, a uh, heat is added. So this uh, uh, high temperature, high pressure air goes into this turbine, and then this exhaust is uh, uh, exhausted to the atmosphere. So here, uh, typical efficiencies are again in the, around 35 percent. So th this is uh, quite commonly used by utilities for peak load demands. So uh, if you have uh, to run these uh, gas turbines for longer period of time, not just for peak load demand, but also meeting some uh, base load, then I think uh, it'll be better to have so-called combined cycle gas turbine. So in these combined cycle gas turbines, uh, we have this Brayton cycle that we saw earlier, uh, but rather than uh, letting this air go into the atmosphere, we have another cycle, this steam-based uh, Rankine cycle, which we had seen in connection with uh, coal power plants. So you can see here that typical efficiencies can be raised to 55 to 60 percent. So it's a much higher efficiency uh, that we can get from uh, combined cycle gas turbines, but on the other hand, uh, they are more expensive because we, they have two cycles. Uh, one is Rankine cycle, uh, here, but uh, uh, also this uh, Brayton cycle here. 